One of the biggest problems in Christendom today is the fact that believers are involved in judging others, whether they be believers or unbelievers. And judging is an awful sin. Yet some do it as if whimsically, if that's even a word, but they do it as if there's no consequence to judging, as if they have a right to elevate themselves to the position of God. And then judge others. You've made a mockery of Christianity. You have caused believer, unbelievers to look at this and say, you're nothing but hypocrites and they would be right. They're using it as an excuse, but why let them? Why are you judging? And if you're judged as a believer, the only thing that happens is it becomes a source of frustration. It becomes a source of discouragement and irritation. Oftentimes it leads to a loss of motivation among new believers, among those who are in spiritual childhood. Now, we do sin as believers. There's a few nuts who run around and say after they believed in Christ, Christ took away their sins and, and that they are never going to sin again. Look, we're in the flesh. We're still in the body. We're still in this temple. And this is the temple of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If you've made the choice to believe in Christ, but it's not a very good temple, Within this temple, there's the old sin nature. And in 1 John 1, 6 through 10, it makes it very clear that believers continue to sin. And then other believers try to make it their business that other believers sin. And so you get together in church and gossip about one another. That gossiping's wrong. You do not gossip about one another. First John one eight and first or first John one eight and first John one ten make it clear that believers are sinners. Therefore, we have first John one nine, which simply states to us that we have a solution as believers to the sins we commit after salvation, post salvation sinning. How do we deal with it? Do we feel guilty? No. What does it say? If we name homologeo in the Greek, that's a 5th century B.C. Athens Greek word, and it meant to name as in a courtroom case. You know, you go before the judge, and if you're guilty, you say, I'm guilty. But actually, it meant more than that. It meant... Uh, for example, cause number 01543, step forward. That's what it means. It means to name the cause number. It's so simple as you just name it. It's a citation. If we name our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all wrongdoing. That's how we deal with sins after salvation. And that is a <laughs> private matter between you and God. In this age, the failures of other believers, you have to leave them in the Lord's hand. It is not to be for you to be the judge. That is to try to put on God's royal robe and judge another believer for what they've done that you consider so terrible. Now there never was a sin and there never is a failure that has been committed by any believer that the Lord cannot handle far better than any one of us. It is only the self-righteous arrogance that tells the judge, that tells the Supreme Court of Heaven and the leader of the Supreme Court of Heaven, Jesus Christ, step aside, 
I'll handle this. I'll tell this believer how to act, what to do, etc. It's none of your business. We've lost privacy in this country. Now, every one of us sin. But if you find someone and they're sinning, what do you do? You leave the sinning believer in the hands of the Lord as judge. The Lord is the judge. Not I. Not you. Not anyone. The Lord is the judge. You leave the sitting believer in the hands of the Lord and you do not interfere. You don't run up to somebody and say, what are you doing? Don't you know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yes, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And within your body, there is something called sarks, the old sin nature. Now, some people have sick bodies. Some people have healthy, strong bodies. But as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the temple. What did Paul mean when he said, Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, he was talking about the Corinthians visiting a bunch of prostitutes. And he's saying, look, you're joining your body to prostitutes. In other words, you're living under the old sin nature. You have the potential to live a unique spiritual life. Stop fornicating. Stop committing adultery. Stop judging. Stop maligning. Stop gossiping. In other words, live under the power. We have a tent. That's all. It's meaningless. The power is from God. And it is the power of God unto salvation, not you. We have some scriptural documentation concerning judging. If you have a Bible, turn to Romans 14, verse 10. Romans 14, verse 10. It talks all about judging. Romans 14, 10, verse 10. But you, believer, why do you judge your brother? In other words, why do you judge your fellow believer? Some of you may have started watching this earlier. Now you're watching it, and all you can do is look at me and this thing in my hand Watch me put it in my mouth, suck on it, and blow out a substance. You don't know what it is. But uh, if you look closely, there's no ash. If there had been ash, would it make a difference? No, it would just make you a, well, never mind. Verse 10, but you, believer, why do you judge your brother? That means, why do you judge a fellow believer? Or you again, why do you regard your brother with contempt? Do you regard another believer with contempt? That's evil. That is sin. And then the Apostle Paul tries to put a little fear into those who like to gossip, malign, and judge. For he says... For we all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That's bema in the Greek, and it means evaluation. In the Roman army, they were always evaluated. And when we go to heaven after the resurrection of the church, whenever that will occur, we do not know. But when it occurs, immediately afterwards, and immediately after we are joined in the air with every one of the other believers, we then go through our evaluation. The evaluation throne. So Paul says, For we shall stand before the evaluation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, why does it say contempt? Well, contempt is the attitude of self-righteous arrogance. 
It's the attitude of the scribes and Pharisees that we've been studying in Acts. Now this is just a blurb or what you would call a soundbite of Bible doctrine. That's why there's no rebound and no closing prayer. I'm just giving you a taste of what this ministry is like and tastes good. At least this does. So then we have verse 12. So then, each one of us shall give an account of himself to God. You may be judging me right now. You don't have a clue what I'm doing. But each one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Now the gossip is quick to try to make some type of judgment. What's in this little thing? What is it anyway? And how is he able to blow what appears to be smoke out of his mouth from a piece of plastic? And what is in that piece of plastic? Is there marijuana? Crack? You don't know. All you see is this, and you see me suck on it, and you want to judge. I bet you do. You want to say, how dare you promote thus and so? Maybe you say, how dare you promote smoking? It does look like smoking, doesn't it? Especially the way it lights up. Watch this. Watch how it lights up. Then I suck it in and watch. Ah, you saw a little something come out. It's not smoke. So, you're judging me while I'm giving a, well, I'm giving a doctrine on not to judge. But you're judging me. Now, if you're one to judge me without listening to the doctrine of not to judge, you don't belong in this ministry. So I'm separating the wheat from the tares. Those of you who are getting a kick out of this and understand, all right, I need to relax. All right, we shouldn't judge other believers. All right, I get the body of the temple of the Lord thing, and I understand it has nothing to do with taking your vitamins. It has nothing to do with keeping healthy, because it doesn't. I mean, after all, you can try to keep it. Look, I heard the other day, there's a man who had jogged all his life, perfect health. At the age of 48, he was jogging, and then blamp, his heart stopped, and he fell over dead right in the road. Bloop. While jogging. While protecting his temple. Whose temple? It's God's temple. He decides when that temple collapses, and you, your real soul, leaves it. And we're going to be, while we don't know it now, we're going to be extremely happy once we're released from this temple, I know I will be much taller. I know I'll be much happier too, but it's not going to be because I'm taller. Because I never really understood that. Although I do see some short men who look odd. Awesome. <coughs> Maybe I'm one of those. I'm like, do I look <coughs> like that man? That man looks odd. He'd be about the same, same size as me or shorter. But usually they are also skinny. So... Makes him look really small. But you see, that's not the point. We all have different tents. Big tents. Little tents. Tents that smoke. Tents that don't smoke. Tents that drink. Tents that don't drink. Is that an issue? If it is an issue, it's not an issue to you. You worry about yourself. You don't worry about others. Why are you concerned about what someone else is doing? Are you getting the point? You should. I'm making the point about as clear as I can. And the Bible makes the point. Verse 12. So then each one of us shall give an account of himself to God. In other words, you individually live your life before God. So why in the world would you want to stick your nose into someone else's business when you have such a responsibility yourself before God? 
Why do you care what other people are doing when you have such a responsibility before God yourself? You shouldn't have time to worry about someone else. Yet, they, yet believers do. Oftentimes it's a point of their weakness. One of the oddest things I've noticed about my generation, they are quick to judge, but it's a different type of judging than before. They are quick to judge the hypocrite. They really hate the hypocrite. Although they're hypocritical themselves, they just don't know it. But they hate it. They hate the hypocrite. Because they probably grew up under a system of hypocrisy where their parents would say, don't do this, don't do that, and don't do the other. And their parents would do this, that, and the other. And they just lost their mind and said, I, I give up. This is insane. I cannot live under these heavy burdens, and I'm out. And that's why most parents, or maybe not most, but a lot of parents don't have good relationship with their children. Their children look at them and say, hypocrites! And the parents look at their children and say, sinner! Why? Because their child does this when they are 34? Let me tell you something about the temple verse. Most people will never understand it, and I always receive argument from it. One day I will teach it, and I will teach it to the extent that there will be no argument about it if you listen to it and accept it. And that is this. When you see somebody do something that you don't like, and then you try to ascribe it to the temple, you're judging. Their temple is none of your business. Just like the house next door to me, it's none of my business. Whatever they're doing, whatever they're watching, it's none of their business. So 1 Corinthians 4.5. 1 Corinthians 4.5 also says, Therefore do not be judging anything before the appointed time of judgment, but wait until the Lord comes, who will bring to, who will bring to light the things hidden in darkness, and disclose the motives of people's right lobes, that each person's praise will come from God. He is the judge, not you. Or Matthew 7, 1 through 3. This is the practical application of your life. Judge not, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And the measure, and the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you again. If there's anything amusing, if it weren't so tragic, is the fact that the self-righteous moral person, the person who is always judging others for sins of fornication or sins that the person didn't even commit, well, they end up receiving the judgment because they measured out judgment, the judgment they measured out, and they say this person sinned, the judgment they measured out is measured back to the person who judged. You received the judgment because you took off God's robe and said, I will be judged or I will be the judge and you will be judged. You're not the judge. You're in contempt of court. You've just taken over the job of the Lord Jesus Christ by being arrogant. So I hope you all have a good night.